Can you imagine yourself not able to hear anything? Well, many develop hearing loss as they age. So I'm Dr. Arun Daikar, a consultant ENT surgeon. I'm here to discuss a few things about hearing loss. Hearing loss is a poor perceptibility or sensitivity of hearing. Uh, any people can get this type of hearing loss. The causes of hearing loss include, at, uh, if we see the uh, human right from the birth, so in the embryo stage or when the baby is in the mother's womb, if the baby is exposed to more ototoxic medications or any antibiotics, so that affects the development of cochlea, which is the main uh, center for the sound processing in the inner ear. So this comes under the category of uh, congenital hearing loss. So as the child ages, so the, because of the uh, persistent cold or nasal infections or even because of the adenoids, uh, the child can have a slight decrease in the hearing. So that's called as secretory otitis media and that is easily uh, treatable with medications and if, if it is in very late stage we can uh, just consider using grommets. A persistent cold uh, can lead to a perforation on the eardrum so that leads to a condition called as uh, separative otitis media depending on the duration of the illness we classify it as acute or chronic. The third category includes uh, the hearing loss which is uh, caused because of uh, infections uh, hypertension, diabetes or any viral infections or any vasospastic causes like sudden occlusion of uh, the blood vessel which supplies the vestibular cochlear nerve can present with sudden sensory neural hearing loss or any exposure to very loud sounds can cause noise induced hearing loss and uh, the commonest thing is the age related hearing loss which sets in after the age of 45 to 50 years. That's a natural uh, uh, deterioration of the sensitivity of hearing. The first sign of uh, hearing loss is poor perception or the uh, uh, appreciation of the direction from where the sound is coming. Uh, so the individual who presents to us with a hearing loss usually complains that he is not able to pick up the conversation or uh, when they are in a group of people, they will be usually, usually missing out certain sounds, uh, certain uh, 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 words in the uh, speech and they need a higher TV volume to understand uh, the programs. Or uh, uh, another uh, sign of, uh, first sign of hearing loss is that they'll have uh, autophony, that means they will be hearing their voice a little louder than usual. So that's uh, called as autophony. A person who comes with a hearing loss, uh, we usually do a clinical examination of the ear, so which includes otoscopy to see the status of the eardrum. The eardrum looks fine. So then uh, we usually go ahead with uh, the audiometry test to assess the sensitivity of the individual's hearing. So if we suspect any mid layer causes, we do an impedance audiometry. So that picks up if there is any blockage of the eustachian tube or the mid layer cleft problems can be diagnosed with uh, the impedance audiometry or the ossicular intactness can be diagnosed with the impedance audiometry. Hearing loss can be treated at various stages. So initially when we diagnose uh, the hearing loss in a baby, so we do a test called as BERA test, that is brainstem yoke response audiometry. So this helps in uh, identifying whether the uh, nerves from the uh, cochlea till the midbrain, if there is any lapse in the connection which will be easily picked up by the BERA test. Uh, so accordingly we can proceed with uh, the cochlear implant in children at the age of uh, two to three years. Uh, that is, uh, we call it as prelingual candidates. So uh, we usually go ahead with cochlear implantation for stimulation of the hearing. So as in adults, when they have a, a discharge or a ruptured eardrum, so that needs a reconstruction of the eardrum. So that procedure is called as uh, tympanoplasty or if there is any damage to the ossicles of the middle ear, so we do ossicular reconstruction that's called as ossiculoplasty. And if there is any involvement of uh, the bone, that is a mastoid bone, so that needs a complete disease clearance, that's called as mastoidectomy and it depends on the type of disease, whether it is a safe or unsafe. So safe type is when where there is only a perforation of the eardrum without uh, uh, any signs of disease spreading towards the bone. So normally when it spreads to the bone, we usually call it as aticoantral disease. 
So that needs a complete excentration of the mastoid bone. We remove the uh, ear cells of the mastoid and uh, if required for further monitoring of the cavity, we are going to reduce the posterior wall of the extraordinary canal so that the ear canal gets merged with the mastoid. Uh, hearing loss can be prevented uh, by following various uh, methods, something like the individuals, those who are exposed to very noisy surroundings, uh, it's better to wear a ear plug or a ear maskers or dampeners, so to just avoid exposure to very loud, so loud sounds for prolonged duration. And uh, other ways of preventing hearing loss is to avoid uh, uh, taking more of uh, amino glucoside antibiotics, which have a very uh, strong ototoxic potential, where it damages the neurons on a prolonged usage. So that can lead to uh, hearing loss. So by avoiding certain antibiotics and uh, continuous exposure to sounds and avoiding smoking uh, or any uh, consumption of alcohol, again, avoiding uh, helps in uh, preventing hearing loss.